In the last two classes, we have seen the techniques of two art forms of India, the Madhubani from Bihar and the Gon art of Madhya Pradesh. In today's class, let us go towards the west and see the worldly art form of Maharashtra. So, this is how the worldly art is done. The walls of the houses of the worldly tribe is painted with this art form and more often than not, it is always a, a mud color wall on which a, the white color figures are made. So, this is how the traditionally the worldly tribe used to decorate their households. Jiva Shoma Mashi, who uh, unfortunately passed away last year, is a very renowned worldly artist. According to him, our history is not written, it is drawn. We tell you stories, we tell you about our life. So, the worldly art is actually the history of the people, the worldly people and these are not written in words, but they are drawn. This is how they represent, this is what they think about the art form, the worldly art form. This is a very beautiful artwork done by Jiva Shuma Mashe, who is showing the, you know, the village life. Historians believe that worldly tradition can be traced back to as far as the Neolithic period between 2500 BC to 3000 BC. The worldly painting was discovered by the world as late as the 7th decade of the last century. So, that is only in the 70s we have, uh, the world has been open to the worldly art, but it is as old as the Neolithic period. The word worldly comes from the word varla, which means piece of land. Worldly tribe resides near base of ranges of Sahadri mountains. They build their square bamboo hut coated with mud and cow dung and these mud walls are painted at the time of ritual functions and marriage ceremonies. Worldly tribe is fond of folk art and they worship god, goddesses and ritual cultures too. They depict the traditional lifestyle and their custom and tradition through this art of painting. Women are mainly engaged in the creation of this painting. Worldly art is known for the monochromatic depiction. Monochromatic means the usage of just two colors, the mud wall over which the white paintings are done, white uh, figures are drawn that express the folk life of re socially religious customs, imagination and beliefs. These paintings do not depict, so, uh, these paintings do not depict social life. Uh, this painting actually depicts social life, but not religious, uh, you know, uh, uh, e religious uh, themes. Images of human beings and animals along with scenes from daily life are created in a loose rhythmic pattern. The worldly tribes survive on forest produce and worship nature. The name of the clan has been, has given the name of the art form. So, uh, we see that the during really, uh, you know, during auspicious occasion, the worldly tribe paint their house with this kind of painting uh, and the, uh, the tribe, the name of the tribe gives the name of to the art form. Shapes in worldly painting, worldly paintings are usually done using fewer uh, characters repeated in cascading or continuous pattern. The basic characters used in worldly paintings are the circle represent the sun and the moon, the triangle derived from their observation of hills and mountains, square considered to be a sacred enclosure. So, when you see a square, it is it is supposed to represent a sacred space, which is uh, distinct from the other space in the painting. Themes in worldly painting, worldly paintings are done uh, during times of festivities and unlike many other folk art form of India, they do not depict gods and deities. So, this is one distinction, uh, uh, this uniqueness in the worldly painting that unlike what we have, we have seen before like the Madhavani painting of uh, myth, you know Mithila region or other you know uh, paint, uh, paintings of different regions of the country. Here in worldly painting, you do not see gods and goddesses too often. It uh, more, more often than not, it depicts the uh, you know the social life, social customs of the worldly tribe. Worldly art is mostly il illustration of day-to-day -day activities of the tribe. Worldly paintings generally are based on the following themes: festival, harvest, marriage. So, worldly paintings are you know talk about or they depict or they you know represent the daily life of the worldly tribe and they talk about the festivals, the harvest festival, the marriages of the tribe. So, this is one rendition of the festival. Uh, you can see how the concentric lines are used and how you know the dancers are shown. Uh, 
and uh, in in between there is a, a person who is playing a you know a big uh, trumpet like thing that is called the tarpa the dancers are actually representing the the tarpa dance of the wali tribe where the dancers hold each other's hand and make chains this is actually represented in this painting you can see the hut you can see other musical instrument look at the drum here look at another drum here so others are also playing some you know uh, other instruments here and a central dancer here playing the tarpa instrument so this is a harvest scene after the harvest is done there is lots of you know food in everyone's household and how they are being you know uh, stack stack stocked up here and how they have been you know the dusk has been is being removed this is the harvest scene which you will find quite commonly in whirly painting this is a marriage scene here you will see the bri bride here the bridegroom and here is actually the deity the local deity and this uh, space is represent this space is you know marked with a distinct uh, distinct you know geometrical um, uh, you know pattern and this is supposed to be the sacred space within the uh, entire space ritual paintings the central motive in ritual painting is the square known as the chalk or chalk art they are of two types dev chalk and lagna chalk so in uh, whirly painting you will find some, uh, you know uh, like this one uh, there is a distinct space marked out by making a square and that is supposed to represent something it's either a lagna chalk or a dev chalk inside the uh, uh, dev chalk that's god square we find palaghata the mother goddess symbolizing fertility significantly male gods are unusual among the whirly and are frequently related to spirits which have taken human shape the central motif in this ritual painting is surrounded by scenes portraying hunting fishing and farming festivals and dances trees and animals this motif is square uh, motif drawn during marriage ceremony on walls this process of drawing square with god is called as chalk lihini lihine in the beginning they just draw a simple line for name of god which is known as devre then the second uh, uh, you know ritual painting is the lagna chalk uh, the lagna chalk is the sacred space where the wedding scene is depicted the bride and the bridegroom is shown within the space the lines are drawn on name of bride and bridegroom in this motif bride and bridegroom riding horse is depicted in the center of the square this motif is painted mainly by married women by performing rituals remaining part of the uh, of it is painted with various motifs by women from families and boys and girls with cheerful gestures a sort of group painting so the main part of the lagna chalk is drawn by the married women and the other part might be drawn by other uh, you know uh, younger people uh, uh, to show you know happy uh gestures so there are two kinds of uh, uh ritual painting one is the jay chalk and the lagna chalk one is related to god which uh, which is who is a goddess of fertility and the second is related to marriages so this is an example of a uh, dev chalk where the square within the square the god uh, goddess of fertility is represented and in the other you know in the remaining part uh, figures of you know Uh, happy figure happy occasions are depicted this is a uh, example of a uh, uh, lagna chalk where the bride and the bridegroom are represented within the you know square and uh, in the other remaining part uh, festivity or dances or happy occasions are represented and the ho- you know the bride and the bridegroom riding a horse is very you know typical in the lagna chalk painting raw material used the whirly tribe do the paintings on mud walls of their own houses designs are never traced or drawn design is directly painted on walls with wooden stick background of the design is earthen color or reddish color the material traditionally used in this painting is rice powder which supposedly possesses possesses 
uh, magical power and is believed that this can scare away evil spirits. So, uh, the usage of rice powder is very uh, you know typical and it has a belief that the rice powder has magical qu uh, qualities and it has the power to ward away evil eyes. So, that is why rice powder is used on the walls. Many of the drawings are without any image figure or narration, but have consistent and continuous geometry. Some uh, in some paintings, it might not be telling you any story, but it might just be geometrical patterns, and it might be just a repeated pattern, uh, you know, uh, done uh, on the uh, canvas or the wall. The visual effect of the symbolic shape is at one with the their effic efficiency and irregular strokes of brush or sticks firmness of style uneven non rhythmic and repetitive forms are not deformities but they the distinctive traits of this art so if you see some you know deformative or some unevenness it's not a flaw it is not considered a flaw it's not considered as e, uh, as a you know uh, drawback of the artist but the deformity or the unevenness actually is a human character and this doesn't take away the fineness of the painting for the painting, the wall is prepared with cow dung. A rectangular part of the wall was given a coating of geru, red, red mud. So, first uh, the wall is given a cow dung coating, then uh, you know, red with that, after that, a red mud coating is done. When this dries up, a brownish red surface is created. The colors are not permanent, but the paintings are made uh, again and again on different occasions. So, uh, the walls. Uh, because the Whirly tribe paint this uh, the Whirly painting on different auspicious occasion, the colors are not permanent, but they fade away with time, so that they can use the wall again for some other auspicious occasion. Colors of the Whirly painting background are Hina, Indigo, Okre, Black, Earthy, Mud, Brick, Red and White made of rice paste to paint. Occasionally yellow and red dots accom accompany white dots. This use uh, they use a bamboo stick chewed at one end to make it as flexible as a paint brush. So, a bamboo stick is chewed, so that it becomes like a paint brush. They also use thin reed like pen, pens for painting made up of sticks broken from bahura tree. With the help of this pens or brushes and rice paste, they paint on the surface. So, this is how the painting is done. First, the surface is prepared by using a layer of cow dung, then another layer of uh, geru mud. Uh, that is a red, red mud is uh, coated. Then over that with using a bamboo stick uh, chewed to make it uh, look you know make it uh, work like a brush is done and with uh, the rice paste the painting is done on the wall. So, this is how the process is done. Characteristics of early painting use of natural color made with rice paste, a border with simple triangle square geometric figures, a border is very important in every early painting, painting you will see a border. Symbols like sun, moon, birds, trees supporting the main theme. So, in the there could be a main uh, you know theme in the painting, like we have seen earlier in a lagna chauk, the wedding scene is important, and uh, in the background or in the you know uh, in the other space, uh, uh, you know sun, moon, birds, trees, and other themes can be uh, done to support the main theme. Human figures, figures of deities, and bridegrooms are common. The faces of human figures are circle body with two triangles and females are identified with a protruding curve line symbolizing ponytail. So, we will see how a man and a fem female uh, you know bodies are distinguished. So, uh, essentially a human figure is drawn with a circle uh, to represent the head and two triangles the tip of the triangles you know touching each other to make the body of the person. Worldly painting is an emblematic, emblematic expression of day to day experience and belief. So, worldly painting is actually symbolizes the day to day activities of the worldly tribe. It is a symbolic representation of the uh, life or daily life of a worldly tribe. Colors used the walls are made of a mixture of branches, earth, and cow dung making a red ochre background for the walls as we have seen earlier. The you know paintings are done on the mud walls. Background of the wall painting, the whirly use only white for the painting. So, traditionally only white color is used for the painting, you do not use any other color, 
only white color on red surface. The, their white pigment is a mixture of rice paste and water with gum as a binding. To create variation, geru, turmeric, kumkum leaves, colored flowers are used to, ext, uh, used to extract natural dyes and gums for trees are extracted. So, to give, give some variation, some turmeric, uh, occasionally turmeric, kumkum leaves, uh, flower colors might be used. Black color is extracted from charcoal and used to depict cruel souls. So, black is uh, related to you know uh, negativity in worldly uh, tradition. Red color from Butio monospera that is a palash flower used to show existence of God Narad Muni and symbol of departed souls. Kumkum color is used as symbol of prosperity. Yellow color is extracted from pineapple. So, different colors have different meanings and they are used occasionally along with the white color to show different things. So, what are the common figures in whirly painting? Humans are common. Humans and animal bodies are represented by two triangle joint at the tip. The upper triangle depicts the trunk and the lower triangle the pelvis. This precarious equilibrium symbolizes the balance of the universe and of the couple and has the practical and amusing advantage of animating the bodies. So, uh, uh, the uh, showing uh, that uh, showing a human body by uh, two triangles which are connected just by, by the tip is uh, has a very symbolic meaning that it the universe the balance of the universe is very precarious it is uh, you know uh, uh, and the the relationship between a man and a woman is also very uh, you know uh, critical it is to show the precarious you know the uh, critical balance of the universe as well as relation, relationship, the two triangles are shown you know just connected to each other by the tip of the uh, points. So, this is how the human figures are represented. You will essentially see a round head connected with a line, two triangles and the legs are drawn, the hands. So, this is how a uh, typically a whirly figure uh, human figure is drawn and if it is a woman you just give add a bun to show the hair. This makes the difference between the man and the woman. So, you can show a bent wom uh, figure this way a dancing figure or you add some musical instruments or you add some utensils that is used by the people. Some pots which is used in day to day affair. So, this uh, second um, uh, representation is God and goddesses. Circles is considered a symbol of life circle. Sun, moon, trees, creepers, birds, uh, things used in day to day life are commonly depicted. Gods like Vaigna god, Nar Naran god and uh, other gods which are you know protect the family uh, are represented in, in the whirly painting. So, we have seen that uh, the whirly in whirly art form uh, you know the religious themes are not important but the day to day activities are more important, the social life is more important. Here the representation of God and goddesses is not to show the religious theme, but it is to show how gods and goddesses are part of the social life of the worldly tribe. So, this is how it is drawn as we have seen that if it is a, if a god and goddesses are uh, supposed to be represented, it is drawn within a square which is called the lagna chalk and within that the deity is represented and in the other you know spaces uh, you know um, uh, other figures can be drawn. If you have a chance just uh, look up for the tarpa dance, this figures with joining hands often represent the tarpa dance of the worldly tribe. Then birds and animals are quite common. The primary occupation of the worldly tribe is farming. Animal motifs like cow, bull, cock, hen, sheep, dogs are commonly drawn in the painting as these are domestic animals. So, domestic animals is quite often represented in the whirly painting. Bird motifs like peacock, sparrow are seen, sometimes snake, frog is also seen. 
Frogs are depicted for, hev for heavy rainfall, scenes of harvesting and farming are also commonly shown. So, this is how the flora and the fauna are represented in early painting. Let us pay attention to the fish drawn here, the crab and other aquatic you know organisms, then goats, the deer, birds, different kinds of birds, monkey, the trees, the mountains. So, Worley has a very deep vocabulary and it is able to show different you know elements by using just their circle, triangle and square. Look at how the paddy is represented. Just pay attention to the different trees, how the different trees are different represented. So, these are some of the common figures represented in early painting. So, this can be a whole painting, just pay attention to, to the details, uh, men and women here doing different activities, simple graphics and line drawings here, which might not have a uh, you know realistic uh, you know representation, but they might just be a decorative or a ornate thing in the entire painting. Here the human figures are drawn. So, just see the how the different postures are created by just using the two triangles here. So, animals and you know plants and animals how they are drawn. So, usage of the white and the you know red background and the white color and how look at how the patterns are different patterns are created. So, now let us try and make a whirly figure a human whirly figure. So, you start with a line basic line, then you make two cross lines, then you make the triangle, then you join the two triangle, mix a you know line here, put the head with a circle like a circle and the hands. After that give him give the person the legs and if it is a woman just draw the bun and put some decoration in the bun. So, this is how a simple human figure is created in whirly art form. You can draw this you know a dancing uh, a chain, a chain of dancing girls just by draw, you know connecting the hands with one another. So, these are the various figures that can be drawn with whirly art. A person with a thole dancing figures, a person carrying something, a woman, a tree, animal, here is a cow and here is a woman who is milking the cow. So, this as we have already discussed it is just you know using sticks, you begin with the stick and then add the triangle and the circle to draw the, draw the figures. This is a figure of a woman in whirly art, this is of a girl just the distinction is made just by the hairstyle. Here just the ponytail is used to show that it, this is a figure of a small girl. Here a lady who is the figure is bent, here are two girls joining hands, here is a lady who is carrying a pot on her head, here is a figure of a cow. Just pay attention that here too in this figure of the cow also two triangles are used in the similar way the how a uh, human figure is created but this is more horizontal and there it is vertical. For the face to a triangle is used and for legs you just draw some st sticks, give the horns, the ears and finally, the tail. 
this is how a animal figure is drawn. This is a house, you can try making it. This is how by using the figures that we have seen earlier an entire whirly painting can be made. You can try it if you like, just pay attention to the placement of the things, the houses, the trees, so the dancers in between, the cart here, the women doing the household shows here, the tree, just pay attention to the difference between this tree and the this tree. So, early has gone through a lot of change from the wall painting that we had seen in the first slide, it has been uh, now come to the fashion industry and whirly uh, painting is quite popular and it is used in various objects from clothes to uh, uh, daily day to day things like the umbrella, the you know the mugs you use to drink coffee to various other things and whirly has been the whirly art has been you know uh, used to decorate many different things. So, today we have seen uh, the whirly art in the next class let us uh, you know explore some other art form you know from the south of India. Let us look at the Chitra art form from south of India. Okay, friends thank you for today just go through the slides and look uh, you know closely how the figures are made and how a entire painting is created by using the simple figures. Thank you so much.